With me now is Steve Waltz, a media spokesperson for Sheba Medical Center near Tel Aviv. Sir, thank you for being with me. I actually understand that Sheba has taken in recently dozens of coronavirus cases from other places in the country because it's more dire in the north and in the periphery. So a massive hospital like Sheba, you're stepping up to the plate. We're stepping up to the plate, but again, uh some of the numbers uh, are not exactly accurate. Uh, the numbers uh, that were thrown out there last week were 25. We've taken on over a dozen uh, more patients who need uh, critical help or in moderate condition. We expect to take a few more. And yes, the situation in Jerusalem in the north is quite bad. And we will be opening another section uh, of our corona uh, care units. Uh, we are prepared for that we can take care of at least 500 if we reach a disaster point, but we don't want to get there. Right now, we have uh, 62 corona patients. Uh, 47 of them uh, yeah. are spread out in the geri which was the geriatric ward. We were able to open up more beds, and so we'll be opening up more beds there for corona patients. But understand that of the 62 that we have now, 31 are in critical condition, and even more important, so we have four children who are not in the greatest shape right now. So, you know, those people who say, well, you know, kids don't get it. Kids get it. And they can be very, very sick with it. Mm. Steve, I want to ask about the space here. You mentioned uh, you've converted now. You're converting a geriatric unit to an emergency coronavirus ward. Underground parking garage spaces have been converted uh, also in hospitals for corona wards. At some point, don't these medical centers run out of room, run out of equipment, run out of doctors? I mean, there must be a threshold at some point. So here's how it works at Sheba. Sheba's blessed with 200 acres and we can, you know, add on as needed, but we don't want to get to that point. We had prepared uh, a second underground emergency critical care corona unit already a few months ago. We do not want to open it because it was prepared for what we would call the twindemic when the flu and the corona hits together uh, in November, December. We do have enough room in the geriatric uh, building to keep things under control. But understand that once you reach a certain level of taking care of corona patients, it's at the expense of the general hospital. And we really do not want to shut down parts of the general hospital because what happened in the first wave is that many people were afraid to come to the hospital. They didn't do their checkups. They didn't do their uh, cancer checkups or their treatments. They didn't do their heart treatments. And now the general hospital is overwhelmed too with people who are sick in general without corona. So, you know, it's a catch-22, as I've explained before, that if you keep adding on corona patients, you do it at the expense of the general hospital care. Are we at the point now, uh, sir, where elective surgeries or other kinds of uh, uh, care is, is being postponed or suspended because of the rise in corona? That will be inevitable. Uh, that's a discussion that's being held every day. Uh, there's a certain inevitability. As the numbers rise, certain parts of the hospital need to be put on hold until we're able to deal with the corona patients. You know, uh, people who work in the, in the regular critical care emergency room cannot be in two places at once. They cannot take care of critically ill people and then run over to the critical care corona, unit, which, by the way, some people are doing during the day. But again, you can't burn people out. And we will approach burnout with many of our staff members if we keep going in this direction. Well, uh, thank you so much for giving us the raw, honest truth here, uh, Stephen, breaking down the numbers. Appreciate it. Good luck to you and health uh, for all of your staff and also improvement for all of the patients. Good luck. Thank you very much, Jeff.